الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلق الله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سار على نهجه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Our praise and thanks due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ما زلنا في كتابنا القيم كتاب الإمام الألباني في صفة صلاة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. We are still in the discussions of the book that was written by our beloved Imam Sheikh Albani about the descriptions of صلاة. That was performed by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Alhamdulillah, we have read the book. So today, Allah will be the text of the prayer of the Estifat and the reading of Surah Al-Fatih. Our discussion today is going to be about, about the supplications of commencement. يعني ما هو الدعاء الذي نستفتح به. الأسبوع الماضي كنا تحدثنا عن النية وتحدثنا عن التكبيرة الإحرام. We talk about all these others part of الصلاة. So قال الإمام ثم يستفتح القراءة ببعض الأدعية الثابتة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهي كثيرة. The Imam said and then after you make your تكبيرة الإحرام which is saying الله أكبر. After that, he said you should open your salat, your qira'a, by measuring or reciting the dua of commencement that was reported from the companions that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say. And we all, as the Imam said, there are many, many adhiyah, a yani it is authentic. And among which we usually say, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. This is one of the dua. The Imam said, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, wa tabarak ismuk, wa ta'ala jattuk, wa la ilaha ghayruk. And there is other ad'iyya that we can mention. And when we say, Subhanakallahumma, we are glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are showing perfection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no one has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is the greatest and the salah that you are performing, you are performing it for none but only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are showing humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are in the state of humiliation, you are in the state of humiliations and submissions to your Lord by measuring this adriya. And there are others adhiyya ka hadha dua wajahtu wajhya lilladhi fatra al-samawati wal-ard wa ana ala dhalika min al-shahideen inna salati wa nusati wa mahyaya wa maati lillahi rabbil alameen la sharika la wa bithalika umirtu wa ana awwal al-muslimin That is one of the adhiyya that was reported the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yaqra'uha ka dua wa istiftah He used to mention this hadith again or this dua So basically when you are saying this you are glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then after that, قال ثم يستعيد بالله سبحانه وتعالى وجوبا ويأثم بتركه. If you say Allahu Akbar and then mention the dua and the istiftah that we just mentioned, you will also say next أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. You will seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the cursed shaitan. And the Imam said, Wahada wujuban. There is wujub. Lianna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amarana bil isti'ada fil Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, When you recite the Quran, fasta'ith billahi min al shaitan al rajim. So, hada al isti'ada. قال الإمام وجوبا ويأثم بتركه. and if you leave it you you will have sins. 
And al istiada as we said, it is a sunnah in the jami' al ma ma'ada Imam Malik. It is a sunnah with all the a'imma. And there are other ways to say this. You can say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim min hamazihi wa nafhi wa nafhi. You can also mention this hadith as the Imam mentions. Or you can say, A'udhu billahi sami' al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim. There are many, many ways that you can seek refuge from shaytan. Seek refuge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the evil of shaytan, from the whisper of shaytan. Al-muhim, an tista'ith billah. أن تستعيذ بالله من من الشيطان الرجيم ثم يقول سرا في الجهر في الجهرية والسرية بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم you say Allah أكبر you make the dua with istifdah you make أعوذ بالله you recited أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم the Imam then said you should say بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم you should start your قراءة with mentioning the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most merciful and the um, the most merciful and beneficiaries. And then he said, ثم يقرأ سورة الفاتحة بتمامها. And then you will recite سورة الفاتحة بتمامها. You will recite all. So by by saying بتمامها, if you say الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم and stop there, لا يوجد. It is not complete. The Imam said you have to recite the whole surah, the whole chapter of Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening chapter of the Quran. وَالْبَسْمَلَةُ minha. The basmala is part of it. So basically that's why we see some Imam, they will recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the Maghrib, Jahran, and some Imam will recite it Sirran. وَالسِرُّ ثَبَتْ عَنِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ وَقَالَ الْإِمَامُ وَبُرُقْنُ لَا تَصْحِحُ الصَّلَاةُ إِلَّا بِهَا your prayer will not be accepted except with the recitations of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Surah Al-Fatiha. Except you recite Surah Al-Fatiha. لا صلاة قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا صلاة لمن لم يقرأ بأم الكتاب أو بسورة الفاتحة. There will be no prayer, there will be no reward for anyone who does not recite Surah Al-Fatiha. In Surah Al-Fatiha, it is أعظم السورة في القرآن. كما ورد في حديث سعيد أبي أبي سعيد الخضري. and if we recite سورة الفاتحة as it was mentioned in the حديث القدسي أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما يرويه عن ربه قال إذا قسمت الصلاة بيني وبين عبدي قسمت الصلاة بيني وبين عبدي ولعبدي ما سأ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this hadith from Qudsi that I divided the prayer among between me and my servant. Allah sama surat al-fatiha salatan. So he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he divided surat al-fatiha between him and his servant to two parts. فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ قال الله حمدني عبدي. When you say الحمد لله رب whenever you say الحمد لله رب العالمين in your salah, Allah will respond to that by saying حمدني ربي حمدني عبدي. My servant has just my servant has just oh thank me. My servant has just thank me. And then when you say الرحمن الرحيم الله ولد سي أثنى علي عبدي ما سرّن هاز بريز مي مالك يوم الدين when you say وإذا قال مالك يوم الدين قال الله مجدني عبدي وفي رواية فوض إلي عبدي if you say مالك مالك يوم الدين الله then will say that my servant has just glorified me. And in another narration, my servant has just gave all his trust, put all his trust in me to protect him, to help him, to assist him. وَإِذَا قَالْ عَبْدُ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then will say, هَذَا لِي وَلِعَبْدِي وَلِعَبْدِ مَا سَأَلْ 
This is between me and my servant. He is pronouncing, proclaiming that he will worship none but only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he seek help from none but only me, and I will help him. Uh, that, that is between me and my servant, and for my servant, anything he asks me. And then when you say, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, My servant just asked me that I should guide him, and I will guide him. Anything that he asks me for, I will grant him those khayr. Uh, so, reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, it is unique, and it is wujub, which means that our prayer will not be accepted if we don't mention or recite Surah Al-Fatiha. And then the Imam said, فَيَجِبُ أَلَى الْأَعَادِمِ حِفْظُهَا If someone just embraced Islam, he should learn Surah Al-Fatiha. He should learn Surah Al-Fatiha. And then he said, فَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ أَجْزَاؤُهُ أَنْ يَكُونْ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ If someone, for example, from China, or let's say America, or India, or in, at the age of 75, except it's now, and he cannot learn Arabic, he cannot learn Surah Al-Fatiha, he cannot memorize Surah Al-Fatiha. Scholars said, and Imam said, that he should be taught to say this SubhanAllah, all glorifications to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, purification is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, all praise is due to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, none has the right to be worshipped except Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah is the greatest, and there is no help, and no power that belongs to us, all powers and and, and mighty belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He should be taught to recite this. However, this deen is so used. I mean, they see the deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this deen for us to be simple. If this person cannot say this, there are another scholars who said that he should say anything the dua, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. If he can say alhamdulillah, he should say alhamdulillah in the life of Surah al fatiha يعني إذا ما استطاع أن يحفظ سورة الفاتحة أو يقرأ سورة الفاتحة يذكر هذا الدعاء الذي ذكرنا سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله إيش ما يشنت؟ إذا هي كانت بيشن ذا إذا هي كانت سيدا there are some calls who said that he should say سبحان الله in the left of صلاة so if he is standing in صلاة he should say سبحان الله as the long it takes the Imam to recite Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sunnatu fi qiraatiha an yabqaha ayatan ayat So when you are reciting Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen You will recite it verse by verse So basically you will say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Pause Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Pause Malik Yawmideen Pause Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka na'abudu wa Pause, just like that. So basically, you cannot recite the whole surah from the beginning to the end because هذا يعني يخلو منه نوع من الانتباه لأنك عندما تقرأ القرآن يحتاج منا أن نتدبر معنا أن نتعلم ونتدبر معنا. Because when we learn, when we recite the Quran, we have to learn from the meaning. Thinks about, reflect upon it to benefit from it. And also, add to that, if you are the Imam and people are behind you, they want to recite. So if you can give that pause moment for them, they can recite as Bad al Aima mentions that we can do that. And then he said that, as we all know, that we're just trying to. Uh, summarize it into a very unique uh, standard. And then he said, It is a sunnah that when you read Alhamdulillah, you should follow it with other surah. With other surah. 
أو بعض الآيات في الركعتين الأوليين الأوليين إذا صلاة الجنازة if the Imam recites الحمد لله example when we are praying upon a janaza and he said الحمد لله رب العالمين and you had a chance after reciting الحمد لله رب العالمين to read one two three ayats it is sunnah that you can do that when you تيل القراءة بعد أحيانا ويقصرها أحيانا you can prolong your recitation at times and then you can make it very short. However, if you are late in salat with people, you should always take into consideration those people that are behind you. You should know that minhum al marid wa minhum dal haja wa minhum al and there are children that are crying, so you have to think about that. You should not go all the way to your full extent in reciting the, the, the ayah. If you want to prolong the ayah of verses, do it in the salat and nawafil. Do it in the salat and nawafil if there is no people. He said, وَيُطِلُ الْقَرَابَ عَضَ الْأَحِيَانَ وَيُتْصَرَاكَ لِعَالِ السَّفَرَ Because there will be people behind you that who are traveling. They just want to pray and go. They have a flight. They want to catch the bus. They want to catch the train. So you let them pray and then go for their purpose. أو مرض أو بكاء وتختلف القراءة باختلافات باختلاف الصلاة. The prayers different because we have صلاة النافلة صلاة المفروضة. The prayer that you are during the masjid leading people, you should be sensitive about it. You should pray according to the people that are behind you. But when you are home, you can read even سورة البقرة. And in fact, that is the most encouraging one. You can do that when you are praying and at home. And then he said, والقراءة والسنة الإطالة القراءة في الركعة الأولى أثر من الثانية. The first raka should be longer in terms of قراءة than the second one. And the last two should be less than the first two rakat. The first should be longer. The second should be shorter. In relation to the first and the last two rakat, should be less less shorter than the two first rakat. وَإِنْ يَجْعَلَ الْقِرَاءَ فِي الْأَخِيرَيْنِ أَقْصَرُ مِنَ الْأَوَّلِيَيْنِ قَدْرَ النِّسْفِ. So which means you should read the last two rakat should be shorter than the first two rakat. And then he said, وَتَجِبُ الْقِرَاءَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ فِي كُلِّ رَكَعَةٍ Every rakah, if you are praying, you should recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Every rakah, you should pray Fatiha. وَسُنَّ الزِّيَادَةِ عَلَيْهَا فِي الرَّكَعَتَيْنِ الْآثِرَتَيْنِ عَيْضًا أَحْيَانًا If you want to read, you can read, but it is just the wujub is Surah Al-Fatiha. وَلَا تَجُوزُ الْإِطَالَةِ الْإِمَامِ لِلْقِرَاءِ أَكْثَرَ مِمَّا جَعَ فِي السُنَّ يشق على من وراءه رجل كبير في السن أو مريض أو مرعة لها رضي أو ذي الحاجة. These are some things that we have to learn about it. If you are leading prayers, you should be sensitive to the ma'mumin. You should not prolong the salat. There's someone who is sick. There's someone who is weak. There's someone who has problem to be solved. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.